Hi, Jonathan here. Happy New Year. The winter is here. It seems to the extreme weather in the U.S. frees up many states. California has soaked in a couple of rainstorms in the last few weeks. But finally, we got sunshine. For those who are not familiar with us, my name is Jonathan. I am the founder of Ascent Ceiling Technology and your host in this channel. I believe most of you have the experience to select proper material for your design. Today, we are going to talk about the chemical compatibility, particularly on rubber swell. In the last episode, we discussed about fluorocarbon elastomer, FKM. I will use FKN as an example to explain chemical compatibility. To start with all boring talk, let me show you what is swell. In this experiment, you will require one beaker, some acetone, a couple of fluorocarbon elastomer o -ring. Other optional accessories include a pair of gloves, a pair of squeezer, a protective lenses, lab coat, something like a ventilator room such as a solvent and chemical respirator. And we are ready to perform the test. So first, we measure the original weight of the samples and the cross-section thickness. Then we pour some acetone into the beaker, then dip the o-ring into the beaker. Start the timer and wait for 5 minutes. We should be able to see the differences. Now we can take out the o-ring and have a measurement. It is quite obvious that O-ring has swollen a lot. Now, compared to the original O-ring side by side, take a look. So we have shown you the swell phenomenon, and now you will ask me why and how this happened. Now it's time to talk about the interesting science behind the theme. In the last episode, we have discussed the FKM type, and we will use the most common type, A-type. As an example, A-type contains around 40% of vinylene fluoride (VDF) and 60% of hexafluoropropylene (HFB) randomly mixed in the rubber polymer chain. VDF and acetone are both polar molecule, and its polar solvent will diffuse into polar rubber and become easily mixed together. You may ask why a rubber is a solid object? How? Does acetone dissolve in FKM rubber? First, these monomers before polymerization, they are fluid. After polymerization, molecule gets heavier but still have the fluidic property. And then with the curing or cross-linking, the polymer chain forms a 3D network, become a highly viscous fluid. Let's bring up the definition of fluid. A substance can be easily deformed or doesn't have a fixed shape, yield easily to external pressure, such as gas and liquid. So, take your o-ring, apply pressure on it. Yes, squeeze it. The rubber is just a viscoelastic material by definition. We'll explain viscoelastic later. Just note, the rubber still remains the fluidic characteristic, which is good for now. They will remain the fluidic property, and they will thermodynamically mix with other fluid. So the solvent, such as the experiment with acetone, will diffuse into FKM rubber 3D network. That is because acetone is a polar solvent and 40% of FKM is polar monomer (VDF). Polar solvent will dissolve in polar rubber, such as A-type FKM. Non-polar solvent will not dissolve into polar rubber, such as A-type FKM. Well, is there any other simple way to explain it? Sure. Consider this soda water is our FKM rubber. I mix it with some whiskey. That is because alcohol is soluble to water. My rubber volume is increased into a cocktail volume, and I got a super extravagant highball cocktail. Your friends at the sand ceiling remind you to drink responsibly. In the other case, the soda water still consider our rubber. I pour some Italian extra virgin olive oil into my soda water. 
due to olive oil is not soluble or immiscible property, my rubber repels the oil and the volume remains the same. The olive oil in the case can be fuel, gasoline, or natural gases. Even though the o-ring swells a lot, a fluid diffusion is a physical mixing. There's no chemical reaction involved. Thus, drying out the FKM o-ring lets the acetone evaporate for a couple hours. The o-ring will return to its original shape. However, the dimension back to original doesn't mean everything is the same. The rubber has molded with a high temperature to increase the polymer chain renderness. We swell the O-ring and let the solvent evaporate in room temperature. That will change the polymer conformation and 3D structure. Typically, will result in slightly change of the physical property and it becomes slightly harder. In summary, rubber components are often exposed to liquid and has some degree of thermodynamic compatibility or partially soluble. When two liquids are mixed together, they can be totally soluble, partially soluble, or totally insoluble. We avoid elastomer selection based on total soluble property unless we need to make a rubber solution. We prefer total insoluble property, but it's often too costly or impossible to make. We must therefore learn to design with partial soluble property. We have listed some common synthetic rubber polarity for your reference, so you can select accordingly. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please click the like icon and smash the subscribe button to support our channel. Hit the bell icon so you won't miss any episode, because sometimes YouTube intentionally will not let you know about new episodes. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.